Hello there, you're welcome to the Oma Living Show and this is a fresh episode. On this episode, we'll be talking about entrepreneurship. <laughs> Those of you who are already used to me know that I love this word so much. Entrepreneurship is the in thing. <laughs> but the thing is, it seems to be overrated. Most people do not even know the actual meaning of the word entrepreneurship. I wrote an article once about the difference between being self-employed and being an entrepreneur. You can be an entrepreneur and not have a business of your own. All you might be doing is just sell ideas. All you might be doing is just be a part of a strong team that makes impact in the society. You might be a social entrepreneur, in which case you might not need an office. All right. So that is what entrepreneurship is about. Entrepreneurship, the youth, and how entrepreneurship can help boost development. Most of the time, we seem to concentrate on the problems the various challenges, the various um, rigors and the processes which are not so favorable to help us achieve our goals. But in doing so, we, we also conveniently omit the various easy steps that man has created. Example, a person like Mark Zuckerberg. He has created one of the wonders of the modern world and that is Facebook. You need not have a structure, a, a structure called an office to be an entrepreneur. So what is, what is entrepreneurship? What is entrepreneurship in Nigeria like? What are the youths like in terms of entrepreneurship? What's their involvement? What is the actual problem? The major challenge entrepreneurs in Nigeria face. I've talked about the startup capital. In a major episode of the last season, I talked about the startup capital being one of the least problems or one of the least you know, in the whole process of trying to be an entrepreneur, the startup capital is the least. Because even when you get to, get you, you're lucky to have an investor who puts his millions into this idea of yours. You need a team to make that idea come into visible fruition. That's where the lack of quality or enough quality human resources come up. So on this episode, I'll be having a special guest. He is an accomplished entrepreneur. He's in the financial field and I'll be introducing him after this time out. Be right back. Welcome back. This is still the Oma Living Show. Before the break, we're talking about a topic entrepreneurship in Nigeria, the youth and how entrepreneurship can help boost development. Many people do not even know the meaning of this word entrepreneurship and that is the reason why we brought this man on the show and he is the MD or one of the co-founders of a big enterprise that's about to take over Nigeria as long as as far as finance and capital for startups and SMEs loans and all that is concerned i think it's better we hear from the horse's mouth even though he's not a horse so over to you mr olajide abiola thank you can we much. first of all get to know you um i'm the co-founder and ceo of kakia.co kakia.co it's a financial technology provider that enables uh those with fixed income and sme operators to have real-time access to capital entirely online and uh, we've been able to achieve this with the use of modern digital technologies, big data, and a couple of other programming and web technologies. So because essentially one of the major challenges facing uh, entrepreneurs in Nigeria is access to funds, funds capital, and you know, competitively priced uh, capital. And uh, that is why we are intervening in this important uh, aspect of our uh, national life and economy to okay. meet entrepreneurs and you know uh fixed income earners at the point of their financial okay needs. so um what would you say is the outstanding feature of kakia.co what makes it so different from other you know establishments or entities that you know help us with funds as entrepreneurs i would say the revolutionary use of technology the innovative creative use of technology because we have a proprietary algorithm 
that uh, is driven by big data, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, predictive analytics, and uh, data, data forensics. So we are able to process loan application or credit score and perform risk assessment on prospective borrowers within minutes oh, and wow. yes, arrive a decision. And all of this is done entirely online without any form of physical meetings, Contacting. documentations, or geographical restrictions. And that's why we've been able to, you know, intervene in the businesses of entrepreneurs or SME operators in 17 states across wow, Nigeria. Wow, I have to clap for you at this point. Oh, thank you 17 very much. states, that means yes. almost half of the yes. entire um, states yes. of the Federation. Now, you said something very important, mm -hmm. and that got me worried, even mm -hmm. though I'm not part of your business. But you said you do this thing without any form of physical contact. And yes. You know all that everything is almost everything is done online yes. considering that there seem to be so many people with questionable character in our claim how do you security wise defaulters and all that how do you, you know? uh, well that's the beauty of our alternative you know approach to solving the problem of uh, risk assessment because first and foremost part of the risk mitigation is in the process itself. You ensure that you are you are given access to this. Uh, I mean, to qualified individuals, credible individuals. Okay. You are not just talking about the capacity, but you are talking about the ethics of business. So you are ensuring that those who are profiled have the ethics, have the credibility, and the credit worthiness to access this. Collateral is essentially to secure. Uh, uh, the, the the loan against loss yes. in the maybe in the event of uh, a default, default or even death yeah. and all of that. But what are the chances of somebody dying or getting incapacitated? So the mitigation risk mitigation itself is in the thoroughness and the efficiency the and effectiveness involved. of the processes yeah. involved. So okay. we, we, we focus equally on capacity to repay and also the credibility of to the repay of the individual. And that way we are able to minimize risk to the minimum. And I must also say that uh, there are a lot of credible Nigerians, honest Nigerians, accountable Yay. Nigerians. Uh, it's just that the dubious, unethical Nigerians have been more proactive. And while the good ones I'm have been passive and, yeah. and laid back. So that's the difference. So we are using technology to change the narrative and tell an entirely different story. Uh, story. Yes. All right. <laughs> You've actually said a lot, and that's getting to know you. But back to the topic of okay. this episode, which is entrepreneurship. You are one entrepreneur that stood out, you know, because of what you do, from the little you've told on my living show. So um, in your own word, what is entrepreneurship? Uh, well, entrepreneurship can uh, be uh, defined as value creation, wealth creation towards socio-economic development. development and impact. Right. Because you have social enterprises with uh, goals, missions, and objectives to 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 solve actually deliver that. yes solve a particular social pro mm. uh, problem without essentially you know making money or making profit and there are for profit uh, enterprises or entrepreneurial initiatives so entrepreneurship is all about wealth creation through the creation of values, values. and values and you, it, uh, entrepreneurship doesn't necessarily mean. Uh, owning your own business or having a business, you could be an employee and an entrepreneur. The most important thing is that you are creating and adding value to the bottom line, to the system, to the ecosystem you are a part of. So entrepreneurship is all about impact, social impact. and economic impact. impact. Thank you very much, Mr. Olajide. Um, I have this question for you. Okay. Um, in Nigeria, we have lots of challenges. And it's not peculiar to us. It's not. Every environment has their own peculiar, peculiar problem. But on the whole, would you say this environment is conducive for entrepreneurs, especially emerging ones? Uh, first and foremost, we must understand that uh, entrepreneurs exist to solve problems. Without the existence of problems, nobody will have jobs. There will be no businesses. Nobody is going to make money. 
And so that reminds I think, me of a popular saying that goes, "Necessity is the mother of invention." Exactly. We we understand that uh, availability of uh, infrastructure like water, good roads, power supply. power supply, and all of that are very very essential to serving as catalyst or you for understand growth, yeah. for growth of entrepreneurs. But then the fact that we have a lot of discrepant discrepant in infrastructure in place, uh, lack of access to capital, like what we are doing, for instance, in, in, in at Kakia, we realize that there are a lot of people who have money and there are a lot of people who need money. And then we created a system that will enable the connection of those who need the money and those who have the money. We are solving a problem of lack of capital for entrepreneurs. So without problem in the there first place, and I think millennials or entrepreneurs in this it's age and time have a lot of things going on for them and they are i would say they underutilize the opportunities I all around that. available to them 20 years 30 years 40 years ago they access the access the size and the volume of resources information knowledge we have access to right now at the top of our yeah. at the tip of our fingers our I mean, fathers, yeah, our parents. Task. Yes, it was. A, it, thank you. It was an uphill task for these people. Maybe one library serving a whole region. a whole region and all of that. But now, with a single smartphone, you could be in your house, comfort of your home. You could be an e-commerce uh, entrepreneur. You could be a consultant. You could do a lot so of things. things. You can communicate with people in real time. So, as we have a lot of challenges, we also, also we have we have a lot of opportunities and tools. Yeah. To actually overcome many of these challenges. Thank you very much. <laughs> what are the major problems encountered by emerging entrepreneurs? It, it looks like you've answered it all, but I wanted to just because um, in, a, in a previous um, episode I talked about beyond the startup capital. I do not agree that it's just about the startup capital. So I want to also hear from you because this show is not just about me. And the viewers want to know what you know. The major problems encountered by emerging entrepreneurs are i would say most of the problems are, are kind of uh, synthetic in the sense that they were created by the entrepreneurs themselves especially in this in our emerging you know uh, market uh, you have the issue of lack of capacity you have uh, lack of work sound and solid work ethics when you look at entrepreneurs in Nigeria or across Africa compared to what is obtainable in countries like India, Vietnam, Asia, China, uh, China uh, you realize that we have weaker work ethics than they do operate over there. And then also our unwillingness to learn. Many entrepreneurs are not ready to learn. We're just They're static. We yes, we are we just static. There's no dynamism, and the world and the dynamics of the world moving, keeps changing rapidly. Okay, I'll, I'll have to cut you short here. I want okay. to ask a very vital question, and that is how do you grade the quality of human resources in Nigeria? I would say very, very poor. And that's why we have, a, the, we, have mm. we have more problem of uh, unemployability than un unemployment. Many uh, jobless people are actually unemployable because they do not have both the rest, um, they do not have the requisite skills or the marketplace skills to function in white collar jobs and even blue collar jobs. And that's, where, that's why we have a lot of artisans coming in from Benin Republic, from Togo, yeah. to come and do some Don't of the basic that, yeah. stuff that we have the, you understand, the human resource to actually do but do not have the capacity you know what? I, I know i'll have you again on this show because you have a lot to say but the, the next question is something you've already answered so as part of our tradition we have two questions to conclude this episode what are the five things that inspire you as a person uh, music okay uh good books okay uh long distance travel wow yes um and then, I mean, a, a very, very massive and uh, engaging conversations with highly perceptive and intellectual pe persons. That's four. And uh, writing. Writing. Five. Yes, I love to write. Who is your role model? Ah, I do have a good number of role models, but... Uh, Just one. I'll say Josh Kaufman. 
Okay, yes. who is Josh? Uh, he's the author of the international bestseller, Personal MBA. Okay, yes. it was nice having you on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so Privilege. much for yeah. staying inspired. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> this episode is indeed a very... Did you feel the vibe? Did you listen to Mr. Olajide? He had a lot to say and I'm so inviting him to further dissect this topic entrepreneurship. Due to popular demand, entrepreneurship is a topic we're going to be talking about often and on. It's something, it's a new phase of development. We cannot run away from it. The, the, the white collar jobs are not sufficient and even if they were, entrepreneurship helps to enhance the process of self-discovery in an individual. So it was a heartwarming time with you on the same, on this episode of Oma Living Show. Please do join us next time. I promise we're coming on with a bang. I love you all. XOXO. <laughs>